welcome to the Church of the Holy Name in Boyton for this service of Holy Communion on the second Sunday after Trinity. This is indeed a service of Holy Communion and if you want to share the bread and the wine when we come to that part of the service and you haven't already prepared, you might like to pause the service now and get those things ready. During this service you will hear the voice of Christine who will be giving the responses. Please join in with those responses in your home.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent and mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we will hear our Bible readings, and after the Gospel, Alison will bring the sermon for us. The first reading is from the first book of Chronicles, chapter 12. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war, and came to David to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. The children of Judah, that bear shield and spear, were six thousand and eight hundred, ready armed to the war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valour for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. And Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man mighty of valour, and of his father's house twenty and two captains. And of the children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul, three thousand. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul. And of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, mighty men of valour, famous throughout the house of their fathers, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. To know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their command. All these men of war that would keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Colossians, chapter 4. 
continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all prayer also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came, and to test Jesus they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome to Devon. I am in St. Bridget's Church in Virginstone a Devon parish, and yet officially not a Devon church, for St. Bridget's belongs to Troy Diocese. This is my home church, the church in which I was baptised, where I worshipped for most of my adult life, and the parish in which we live and farm. So a very warm welcome to you all to Virginster today. We have just heard from Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' words to the Pharisees and Sadducees, rebuking them for not being able to interpret the signs of the times. And this has led me to ask, how do we interpret the signs of the times today, especially today, in this year of 2020, this year of COVID-19? How do we interpret the signs of the times? because these are no ordinary times. This is a time of great loss and pain and hurt and bereavement for so many, of isolation, and yet of testimonies of people who've gone beyond at their own personal cost to protect others and to serve us. It's also a time of quietness, of reflection, a time of being able to hear bird songs, the roads are quieter. It is a mixed time. And it's a time to ask, what is this sign? How do we interpret this sign? And how do we respond? And that's difficult because, of course, the times are uncertain and we don't know what is going to happen. So where is God in this time? And what might today's readings have to say about it. Let's begin with the Old Testament, with the reading from the book of Chronicles, because that was a time in which there were two kings ruling at the same time in Israel. King David was ruling over the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and Saul's son Ishbael was ruling over the other tribes in Israel, the other ten tribes. And so it was a time of tension, and conflict. It was a time in which Saul, who had died as king and rightfully his son had taken the throne after him, was the rightful king and heir for the throne. But David had been chosen by God. He had been anointed by a prophet and gradually the people of Israel, the tribes of Israel, began to recognise that David was to be their king. And so when Ishbael died, instead of his son being put on the throne, there was a groundswell movement of the tribes as they began to recognise the signs of their times. We have that lovely verse in the middle of the reading we listened to this morning, which said, 
but the tribe of Issachar were those who had understanding of the times and they knew what the nation of Israel ought to do. Tribes that had the understanding of the times and they knew what the nation ought to do. And so they gathered together all the tribes at Hebron and there made King David king over the entire nation without civil war and bloodshed and unrest, but simply as a large movement in which together the people understood and saw David as their future king. So what about today? What is it that we are intrinsically understanding? What is happening that we're beginning to understand in this new strange world of lockdown and coronavirus? What has that to teach us today? And how do we interpret it in the light of scripture? Lockdown is, as I said earlier, a time of isolation. And yet when we lock the church doors, we didn't lock God in the church. Something that has been quite incredible is the way that God has met us in the everyday outside of church. I never thought that I would be able to pray as well at home in a spare bedroom as I have been able to do in a church building. And yet God has met me there in my prayers. And I hear this testimony from so many that as we have had to pray and to dig deep into God, so our spirituality and our faith has grown and we have drawn closer to him. And we're beginning to find that God is not just in church and not just on Sundays, but he's broken out of some of the areas where we saw him before. And he has broken into the whole of our lives, into the everyday, into every home. And there we are meeting with God in a new way, in a deeper way, in a way that we receive his blessing. It's almost like an incarnation of God broken out from the formal places of worship into our everyday homes. When we think of the incarnation at Christmas and Jesus being born as God's son among people, it's a bit like that as though God is being born among us in a new, in a new and surprising way. And it helps me to understand the incarnation in a way I've never embraced it before that God is with us in this, in the everyday. There is a verse on the stained glass window behind me, which you can't see, but it says, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. The last words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. I am with you even unto the end of the world. What an amazing thing, that God is with us even in this. That God is among us. And that God is walking alongside us. So as we embrace the signs of this time, and as we discover that God is there ahead of us and with us and in this, even in the struggles and even in the suffering, the loneliness, yet he is walking this path with us. So as we turn to our final reading, and we listen to the letter from Colossians, we get a little glimpse of perhaps what God might be asking us, how he may be asking us to respond as we understand this time. For we hear in the, the epistle to the Colossians, we hear the words, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. Devote yourselves to prayer. That's a powerful way of praying. Be encouraged to devote ourselves and to be alert at the same time so that we think about what we are praying. That we are called to pray. And at the same time we are asked to pray that God will open a door for the word. Is that not what the incarnation is about? About God opening a door for his word, for his son? We are told so that the mystery of Christ may be known, may be declared, and may be revealed. Is that not a lovely thing that even in the struggles and the darkness and the uncertainty, God is breaking into this, 
bringing with him his mystery and being born anew among us. And we are finally reminded to conduct ourselves wisely in order to make the most of the time. We are asked to make the most of this time. We are asked to pray, to devote ourselves into prayer. This is a special time, an anointed time of God's presence with us. Let us respond as he has called us to do in prayer, devoting ourselves to him and finding him in the difficulties and in the struggles which this year is bringing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would meet us as we strive to seek you. Comfort us, walk with us, and be with us in our deepest needs. Give us grace to be your people, to understand this time, and to respond by devoting ourselves in prayer to you that you may open a door, that your Son may be known. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayers and intercession. Let us pray. Today's collect speaks of love as that most excellent gift of God. It is experienced today through the Holy Spirit who guides and gifts Christ's followers. It is seen in those who love and serve their neighbour. And it will be fully known when at the end of life's journey, we enter the eternal and perfect love of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father God, who knows our needs before we ask, hear our prayers. For all people. Like Jesus' mother Mary, alone in her grief, we all need the support of each other in the trials and sorrows of today. Lord God, give us compassion to care for those around us and for everyone who needs our help. We pray for our families our church, and for all who minister in God's name. We pray for all those we know and for people we have never met. For the black family who dare not leave their house at night. 
for the gay Christian whose inner conflict nearly drives him to despair. We pray for a young woman whose childhood abuse has ruined her relationship with men. And we pray for an old lady who only got two cards at Christmas and they're still on her mantelpiece in June. Lord, we pray that you will give to the gospel we proclaim the radical edge that we see in the words and actions of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. Not to, not to save his life, but to give it up in the cause of the kingdom. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Give us grace to resist our beguiling culture. Help us to place compassion before competition. When tempted to judge, preserve us from our tendency to be shocked by things we actually find intriguing or attractive. When we are angry with the behaviour of others, Help us to recognise in them uncomfortable or unadmitted parts of ourselves. In success, preserve us from self-reliance, remembering all those who suffer from forces outside their control. In failure, preserve us from self-pity, from blaming others or unlucky circumstance. In all we try to do or be, support us by your Holy Spirit. Sustain us by the knowledge that even in a world as sick and wounded as ours, we are not alone. Lord God, preserve us from any sense of hopelessness. Keep us praying, keep us caring, keep us loving. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. In our daily, ordinary lives, show us how to live and act as you intended. And as we walk the streets, May we see through the eyes of Christ, hear through his ears, and act with his practical insight and compassion. If we are given the grace of opportunity to bind up another's wounds, may it be through him and for him the incarnate expression of your divine compassion. We hold before you, God, the thousands who have died from COVID-19. The memory of each will live on forever in the hearts of their loved ones. We remember with love much sadness the passing into God's eternal care of Phil Sleeman and Beryl Atherton. May they all rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. These, Lord God, are the prayers of your people. We ask you to take each one and answer them in your own time and in your own way. Give to us all expectant and trustful hearts. Alleluia. Amen.
So now the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy being. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>